Yes, I am a pirate. Two hundred years too late. Cannons don't thunder. Nothing to plunder. I'm an old I worked. I worked on the Rockbuster at 19 years old. I got my first captain's license working. Yeah. Working then and then I went to Vietnam in '65. They gave me my job back after I came back from uh, uh, Vietnam. I was there until '72, and then that's when I left and went to Grenada. I was looking for a bigger boat, and so I listed my 34-foot boat with a yacht broker. And in the middle of all this, he says, "Billy," he goes, "There's a boat down in Grenada, a 50-foot Hatteras. He's looking for a captain on." and he might be willing to sell it. So I says, ah, oh, that sounds like something I would want to do. I flew to Grenada, met the guy. He says, let's go fishing. So I took him fishing. We had a good fishing trip. And we got back in and he goes, I think you're, I'll hire you on my boat. So I worked for him for about a year and a half. And yeah. then he come to me one day and says, Billy, he goes, I'm getting old. I think I want to sell my boat. Oh Lord, I'd fell in love with the boat. So I called back to my, my yacht broker friend and he says, uh, I'm trying to sell your boat, but it's a little, I, maybe we drop the price a little. I said, drop the price. I need about 30 grand for this down payment and everything, pay this boat off and the down payment for this. So he did, it sold in a week. And they, they teletyped me back in Grenada and I made the deal with the old man and I bought Duchess in November 1974. I got back from Grenada in June 28, 1976, and I was in Flanagan's Bar in Hallandale, and Big Daddy saw me and he says, I hear you got a big boat. He says, he came over and we were talking, and he goes, I got a friend that's got an island in the Bahamas, and he's looking for a charter boat. So I says, great, that sounds just up my alley. He goes, I says, what's the island? He says, Walker's K. I says, well, wow. I says, give me his number. Let me give him a call. So he gave me Bob Applenap's number, and I called Bob Applenap in New York. And he goes, I'll fly right down, and, and we'll talk. So he came on board, and he's sitting right there. And he, I introduced myself, and he goes, Billy Black, you know how to make a Manhattan? I says, yes, sir. I sure do. So I went over, and I made him a Manhattan. I brought it back. And he goes, uh, I told him about Grenada and I was back and I'm wanting to charter but there had no room at Bahia Mar. The, the, all the boats were socked in there and I had no place to charter. So he says, uh, I think you're just the guy I want for my island. So I says, great. I says, uh, where do I sign? I mean, you got a contract? He stuck his hand out and he shook hands with me. He goes, Billy Black. As long as you're happy with me and I'm happy with you, you got a contract. So I went over January 7th, 1977, and I worked for Bob until uh, um, the hurricane in 04. Yeah. I worked on the island for all those years, 28 years, whatever it is. Yeah. I drifted back yeah. over here, and we, we finally got, got it together here to start rebuilding Duchess. And uh, we got her back going again, 2011. We hauled the engines out. I bought a pair of used engines, 903 Cummins. And, and these engines had 60, Detroit 871s had 60,000 hours on them. And at an average of 10 knots, which is about what I did. Yeah. When I was running, I was 12. When I was trolling, I was 8 and 9. Yeah. 60,000 hours at 10 knots, that's 600,000 water Ooh. miles. This lure has been my favorite lure. I've caught several big blue marlin on this lure. We released one off of uh, walkers I know was over a thousand pounds. We fought for almost uh, 11 hours and finally got it up to the boat and uh, let it go. But it, she was a big fish. And we also caught a giant bluefin, ate this one on the right short rigger. It was a 781 pound bluefin. We brought that one in the boat. And uh, this lure's caught everything all up and down the Bahamas and gr all the way down to San Salvador. I didn't have these lures in Grenada, but if I had, I would have caught a lot more bigger fish. It's a concave head. The head is flat on the nose and it's concave. It works really good in rough water. And it's also 
chugs a lot, even in calm water, if you tow it at 10 knots or better, around 9 or 10 knots, it comes up and chugs and dives down and smokes. And every fish out there likes a smoking lure. And I call this uh, the color of it. I call it the bleeding dolphin. I spend half of my time in the tower because I like to see blue when he comes up under a bait or a teaser. I like to let the angler know ahead of time that there's a fish coming and let them get there and get ready. Either drop it back, wind it up, or whatever needs doing. My favorite spots are northeast on, on the humps. We got a hump, set of humps out in 3,000. It goes from like 1,200, 1,500 to 3,000 feet. It's northeast, about 8 to 10 miles off of Walker's Cay out of Seal Key Channel. That's the first set of humps. And then northwest, about 15 miles out, there's another set of humps we call the northwest humps. And I've caught a lot of big marlin on both. If anybody ever wants to call me, on uh, channel 73, we stand by on off walkers. Everyone to call me and talk to me about what's going on. I'll always be helpful to help you uh, with any information where I raise fish or whatever, or birds. If we're tuna fishing and I'm in birds, I'll be glad to share it with everyone. I've always have been. Mother, mother ocean, after all I've found, Occupational hazard B Occupation's just not around Feel like I drown Feel like I drown Gonna head up town I feel like I drown That's a good rock, man. <laughs>